I've recently gotten uh, beta test access to the OpenAI GPT-3 API, and I've been playing around with it. I've been doing a bunch of experiments and just sort of seeing what's possible uh, with this new API. Uh, I'm going to continue to have access until the middle of August, at which point I believe OpenAI is going to be trying to commercialize that, that API, so I'm not sure what the pricing is going to be like. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's start. Okay, so let's take a look at a super, super basic demo. All I've got in front of me is a Jupyter Notebook. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm going uh, and I'm going and creating a config file. And in that config file, I've got my API key just for the purposes really of this video. I don't want to be sharing that API key, so I'm importing it as config. Uh, I'm importing the OpenAI library, uh, which allows me to just easily work with the uh, OpenAI open AI API. Um, so I'm importing those two. So just shift enter there. Uh, now I'm assigning the config key to the open AI API key. All right, good. Now let's explain sort of what I've done here. There is a really basic interface that open AI provides you with to literally play around with the API. It's called the playground. Um, I didn't want to demo that because I'm still not hundred percent sure they like want us to show that off or if that's just supposed to be for for, for the beta testers to, to see. So what I've done is I've just created a uh, the same equivalent, the same thing uh, with, with, with just, just Jupyter Notebook. So let me just explain what I've got here. So I've got my prompt here um, and I can just uh, custom text, let's say custom text input. Um, and this is where the magic happens. This is really the, the, the most important part of getting good results from the GPT-3 model is you have to make your prompt. It's all about priming the prompt. It's all about putting uh, together the right words so that it all makes sense uh, and generates the output you want. Uh, right here, if you go down a little bit, I've got parameters. So I've got the number of tokens I want. I want which engine. DaVinci is the newest one. It's the, the model that has just been released, right? It's the one that everybody want, is talking about. Uh, you know, so uh, temp is essentially going from zero to one. Zero is the model using the literal data that it has within itself. So the, you want to use zero when you want the model to be very precise with facts. You want to go all the way up to one when you want to maximize the model's creativity. Okay, so I've got I've set an attempt to one there. Um, top P, not really sure what that's about uh, and I'm not using any of these I'm not using log probs uh, I'm just really using the the tokens I'm using the temp I'm using um, I'm also using two other ones but I'll put those in later uh, but but generally yeah I'm focusing on just writing good prompts uh, and then the next thing is so I just uh, run this cell and that's going to actually send a request to the API and then I'm gonna get my text back so first of all let's start with something incredibly incredibly basic let's do the 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 most popular kind of demo here of gpt3 which is just uh, some text okay so for example uh this is really great tasting juice okay that's all i'm saying this is really great tasting juice and that's my prompt and let me just go through all the way all here make sure these are all being put in um, I don't want to change anything with my with my parameters, so those are good. And let's go ahead and run that. All right, that's pretty good response time. And let's see what we got. So we've got uh, our text. Then response is best tasting tobacco juice ever, uh, which is kind of weird if you if you put that together. So let's actually do that. Let's take my prompt. Uh, let's say print. Essentially what I need here, sorry, what I need is uh, to combine those together. So I can say uh, my prompt here, I'm going to do an F string format string. Okay. And I want it to be my prompt and then really nothing else because the, the model should be doing the formatting there. Uh, and then it would be uh, response, sorry response.choices zero dot text and that should work and so I can see okay again so this is actually great so what that allows me to do is it allows me to see the the output 
Um, and in fact, let's put that all together, right? There's no reason to separate those out. So uh, I've combined the, the response request with, with the output so I can have that all in one line. Uh, so uh, let's try another one, okay? Let's try another one. Uh, McDonald's was created in, and let's do shift enter, shift enter, and run that. Okay, so McDonald's was created in Southern California this year. Now that seems like not really very factual. So let's go to my temp, let's put that on zero, and that should maximize how factual the response will be. And let's see, look at that. Set it to zero, McDonald's was created in 1940 by Richard and Maurice. So that's pretty awesome. Um, so that's a basic thing. Uh, let's do something a little bit more uh, advanced in the next video. Okay, so here's the second demo. Um, I've got the same notebook, but I've done quite a few modifications to it. First of all, I'm importing IPy widgets, which allows us to use widgets in Jupyter Notebooks. Um, uh, so let's go through that step by step. So shift enter here, uh, shift enter to set the key to the key. Uh, this is where I'm actually creating the widgets, and so I'm going to shift enter there, and <clears throat> now I can actually use it sort of like an application. So if I go here to, if I go to name, I can change the name of my company. So let's say Residual Plumbing Supplies Incorporated. All right, sounds good. And let's say it's in Seattle, Washington, USA. And their industry is manufacturer. Manufac uh, manufacturing. Okay. Is that a word? Okay, I got a Polish dictionary here. Anyway, I got manufacturing as the industries. Um, and the way these widgets work is that I've hit, once I've hit shift enter, uh, if I modify this, that's already going to be updated. I don't have to hit shift enter again. You can just treat that as, as an interface in any other application. Okay, and then I'm with this my entry, I'm just setting up the, the string to be the correct value so that I can insert it here into uh, my prompt. Uh, my prompt has been modified uh, to, you know, contain a priming text. And what this text does is it uh, tells the model, first of all, that I want it to generate everything that a new business needs to get started, connect to get their audience. Uh, and then it, it gives an example to the model of what, what I would like that to look like. So this is actually your chance to provide some specific formatting. So here I'm doing full name of the company, headquarters, industries, geographical focus, philosophy, logo concept, which is a, a textual representation of the visual uh, aesthetics of the logo. Uh, then company colors, which are taken from the logo, the slogan, uh, three product ideas, one free tweet, three geographic targets. This is all factual stuff about Apple that I've taken from uh, from open source, uh, you know, uh, from open source, from uh, from information on the internet, from Wikipedia, from whatever. Okay, so uh, then I add my entry here. Again, I'm using the f-string formatting trick uh, that's been in Python since Python 3.6. Uh, I go ahead and update my parameters. I've actually modified them a little bit. I've got 350 tokens. Uh, my temp is 0 0.85, uh, nothing else really modified there. And uh, let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. All right, so not perfect. Uh, it looks like it is getting full name of the company, uh, which is the data we've provided, headquarters locations, we got that, you know, industry plumbing. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. So actually what happened is I did not add, as you can see, I did not add that to this. So I'm going to go ahead and add that now. Uh, new line, and that is going to be, they're going to be expecting industries. All right, and that is going to take, uh, if I look over here at industries, that value, all right? And I believe that's it. So let me do that again, run the parameters and see if the response works this time. Okay, so uh, yeah, it, it sort of works, but again, it's something different than we're expecting. So we got the full name of the company, headquarters industries. It's getting geographical focus, getting the philosophy, it's getting the headquarters again. So something's wrong here. Now this is the problem with GPT-3, is that everything seems to be working and then it's not working. So we have to make sure that everything is the same. So full name of company, 
uh, semicolon headquarters location, semicolon industries, uh, semicolon, that's what I have there. Now, geographical focus, I guess I could try, let me see if I want to do that. Okay, no, 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 I want that, that's all I want it to be. And then I can sort of play around with what's going to help me. So I can do a new line at the end, and maybe the issue was with the prompt, maybe the issues with the temperature. Uh, this is sort of the, again, not what I want, right? So I'm going to take away the, the new line here. And this is the sort of the problem with GPT-3 is like, it looks fine, and then you try to do a different example, and it totally looks wrong. And so you have to refine it and refine it. Okay, now this is correct again. So, so okay. So we've got full name, uh, headquarters, industries, manufacturing, geographical focus, North America, philosophy, environmentally friendly. Logo concept, blue and white swooshy logo with a picture of a toilet on the front. Interesting. Uh, company colors, blue and white. Slogan, green and clean. Three product ideas. A low flow toilets, high efficiency water saving shower heads, uh, eco-friendly drainage projects, uh, products, uh, one free tweet. Plumbing products, producer residual plumbing supplies today launched its new product range of low flow toilets and shower heads. The company has launched a new brand, Swish, to identify its environmentally friendly products. And geographic targets, North America. Okay, so I, I, I feel good about it. I feel like it's where we want it to be, but Let's just do another test, okay? So let's change this to uh, O'Hara Burgers Co. And this is going to be in Madison, Wisconsin this time. USA. Let's do it. Not SUA. USA. And this is going to be food service. All right. So that's good. That should update that data. Go ahead and do that. Parameters. And let's see what happens. All right, great. So as we can see with our different example, it also worked. So I think that this uh, priming text is good. All my setup is good. And in my opinion, that is a well-functioning uh, implementation of, of a model to generate some helpful branding uh, info for a, a new company. All right, let's take a look at a more advanced, uh, uh, let's take a look at a more advanced uh, GPT-3 uh, project next. All right, everybody, welcome to the final part of this uh, video. I'm talking about chatbots right now. Uh, this chatbot is running in Jupyter Notebook. It's uh, fairly easy to build. Uh, what I've done is I've created a module called Bot Interface, which is all the code for the chatbot, but I don't want that you know, uh, interfering here with this nice chatbot interaction, so I'd rather just import the code rather than have a bunch of uh, unsightly code uh, you know, uh, in, 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 this, uh, into, in this sort of game right uh okay so the way that this is broken up is i've got history which uh gives us all the all the conversations that have happened uh so far thus far in in the uh in the conversation with the bot here's what the ai says here's the temperature and i've i've added a feature where you can generate a voice for the bot so it's a little bit more rich of an experience uh and here's just what you say so let's just uh, go ahead and send the message Hi. Okay, so that's pretty boring. Uh, let's mix it up a little bit. Yes, I do like coffee. Coffee is very good. It helps me work better. I work in many fields like computer vision, NLP, ML, GPT-3. I work on many projects like Google Rank Brain, Google Search, Google Translate, Google Images, etc. Okay, so that's what it is. That's the chatbot. Uh, really simple to build this stuff. The thing is that I just wanted to say with this video is that a lot of people are posting these amazing demos. And really it's just a lot of times glossy front-end magic. But what you have to do to get that to work on GPT-3 is often really easy. Um, giving it a couple examples. That's the whole thing about GPT-3, why it's such a big deal is because uh, if, if you look at 
what I'm giving the the uh, the chatbot here as priming, which is sort of the information that it needs to know the style of response. I'm really just giving it this. The following is a conversation with an AI. The AI is helpful and friendly. Then I'm giving it a uh, sort of initiating conversation, which is the human saying hi and the AI saying I'm a chatbot based on GPT-3. So this text is the t the only setup that I have to do with the GPT-3 API to get it to work as a chatbot, for example. Once I give it that, all the rest is really just going with the flow. So responding to what I'm asking and you know developing this context. So uh, if you see a slick demo, um, you know it's it's worthwhile to really think about that that's probably actually quite easy to reverse engineer or clone or build your own version so so you know uh before you start signing up for all these services uh you know I, i'm excited because uh as far as i understand uh you know openai is going to be eventually releasing this api to uh to c customers consumers hopefully it won't be you know uh, priced uh, out of out of the range of uh hobbyists and other other uh individuals uh but uh, you know i'm trying to make the most uh, uh the best use i can of it and uh you know i've had a lot of fun uh using this uh, api so far so if you want me to uh try any experience with this ai go ahead you know write your suggestions in the comments uh, if you like this video of course do a thumbs up if you hated the video do a thumbs down so i know that this is a terrible video uh and in general you know subscribe if you want more uh more of these sorts of uh videos about uh you know really interesting topics uh and 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 sort of some ways to to go about it i'm, I'm going to link to this code um for this chatbot uh i'm going to link to that code for this and for the other examples as well all right that's it